Now that we've got data in our database, we need to work on showing it to the world at large. In any application, there are typically going to be two types of users, those who manage data, in other words, add, edit, and delete it, and those who view it. Django gave us a free, powerful admin interface for the people who manage data. If you simply need a web interface to manage your data, this could provide all you need. However, in our social network, many people will be reading our blats that don't need to have access to the admin form. For those people, we have views. The easy way to think of a view in Django is to imagine a web page. The home page is a view, a list of blats shared on Tuesday is a view, and the action that happens when you click the like button is also a view. A view is a mapping of a URL with some Python code and usually also a template file. Let's look at how these URLs are mapped. In our code editor, let's look in the blather folder for urls.py file. This is where Django stores the mappings for the views. At the moment, there's only one mapping, and that's for the included admin site. The mapping is done by calling the URL function and passing in a regular expression, followed by the module method to call when handling the request. An optional name attribute is usually passed in as well, though it's not included here. The reason why we don't need the name parameter here is because this is a special URL mapping. The admin app, which is bundled with Django, has its own urls.py file. So this line merely includes the mappings and delegates everything that starts with admin to the rules in that file. Let's create a simple rule quickly. We'll create a rule to define a home page. We'll call the URL function and then pass in a regular expression that matches an empty URL. So r quote caret dollar sign quote. And then we'll call the method views.home and give it a name of a home page. If your editor is smart, it will give you an error with views.home because it's not a valid name. At the top of the file, let's add the line from blat import views to make that error go away. Save your changes, but expect errors from Django. We need to open up the views.py file from the blat app folder and add a view called home. Django includes many helpers. The most common one used for views is render. We'll import that from django.shortcuts. Then we'll define a function called home that accepts one parameter, an HTTP request object. In this method, we simply need to call render with three parameters. The first is the request, the second is the template name as a string, and the third is a dictionary containing the context for our template. This is where we stash variables that our template will use. We'll define one called message and set its value to hello world. Feel free to embellish that as you see fit. Ensure that your run server restarts and is running, then visit localhost colon 8000. You should see a great error like this, declaring that the template does not exist. This error page is one of my favorite things about Django. It's one of the most helpful error pages I've seen. By the way, this is enabled for development mode. In production mode, you'll want this page to be disabled, which you do by setting debug equal to false in blather settings.py. We're going to end this video now, but before you resume the next video, read through this page and get a feel for the kinds of helpful information it tells you. If you want, introduce an error in your view and see how it changes. We've got a simple view. In the next video, let's create a template so that we can get rid of this error message.